Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week with a curious 3D printing technique. Originally developed as part of an MIT research project a few years ago, rapid liquid printing has evolved and been spun off into its own company, named RLP. The method lets users create elastomer and silicone-based parts by printing into a vat of transparent gel. This allows for supportless designs that can be printed with extremely complex geometries. Apparently the finish quality is on par with mass-produced manufacturing methods, but interestingly with this, there is no post-processing required. All the user has to do is remove the prints from the goo and rinse them off with water. YouTuber Honey Badger visited RLP's booth at the recent Formnext 3D printing conference a couple weeks ago and made an informative video on this very interesting development, so check it out to learn more. In other manufacturing news, researchers at ETH Zurich have developed a new way to 3D print multi-material functional parts in one go. They did this by combining a laser scanning system with slow curing polymers, and they say this allows them to, for example, print the bones, ligaments and tendons of a hand, each with different strength and elastic properties, and all in a single pass without needing assembly. Researchers from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute uploaded a video showing how they've developed a way of 3D bioprinting hair follicles directly into lab-grown skin, paving the way for some potentially very interesting applications. Outside of the standard hair regrowth uses that one would assume, the researchers say that the site around hair follicles is actually responsible for a type of stem cell production which heals skin, and that eventually this could be used for precise skin grafts, as well as making other realistic skins that remove the need for certain animal testing practices. Micromanufacturing is another topic I've been seeing a lot of lately, so far mostly in the realms of nano-optics and glass structures, but Exadon have introduced the U3D, a new metal 3D printer designed to create custom probes and test pads for ever-shrinking chip designs. Apparently this machine helps ease bottlenecks with existing testing methods, allowing for components like processors and micro-OLEDs to be tested much faster, even allowing precise probes with less than 20 micron pitch. There aren't many details on how it works, but it looks like a miniature directed energy deposition type system. In flying news there have been a few test flights for various VTOL manufacturers over recent weeks. Firstly, Elroy Air announced their C-1 aircraft completed its first test flight in California. This is an autonomous cargo drone which is currently part of three Air Force contracts. It has a range of 300 miles, can cruise at 143 miles per hour and can carry payloads of up to 300 pounds. In similar news, New York City seems to be positioning itself as an early adopter for electric air taxis, as both Joby Aviation and Volocopter conducted their first test flights for their respective aircraft, both at the downtown Manhattan heliport. In generative AI research, and a joint team from universities in Kuwait and Maryland, along with Meta Research, released Human SGD, an interesting tool which can create decent-looking 3D models of humans using just a single flat photograph as input. They say what's different about their approach compared to others is the generation of multiple views of the human, combined with 2D diffusion models to paint the missing regions in the new silhouettes. In other AI news, I recently came across this plugin for the image editor Krita, which streamlines AI image generation directly in the app. This enables users to directly change and generate new sections of images, just like the Photoshop Firefly beta I've shown recently, but unlike Adobe's apps, this is free and open source. Check out the GitHub page for more info. Meta's AI research division is also getting in on the generative AI video game, recently releasing Emu Video and Emu Edit, two tools that allow users to both generate and edit video from text prompts. They have a demo available, as well as lots more technical information on how it was achieved over on their website. Over in Augmented Reality, and Mixed News wrote an interesting article showing some demos and experiments that use the newly released Quest 3's pass-through feature. There's all sorts from a horror game that can map multiple floors of a building, turning the whole thing into an interactive experience. Virtual graffiti that superimposes over the physical world, similar to Gibson's Idoru novel. You can add a pool table to your environment if you have the space, and can play with up to four players at a time, and you can even play Super Mario Bros in 3D. I wonder how long it's going to be until it becomes a normal thing to see random people wearing mixed reality headsets in everyday life. And ending this week with a really great DIY project, YouTuber Frains posed the question, is it possible to produce 3D printed optical lenses with a 3D printed lens grinding machine? And he created a 10 minute video showing the results. He ended up with a cool little machine that grinds and polishes different sized SLA printed resin optical lenses in a precise way. Just think how far we've come that now anyone with this fairly inexpensive gear can semi-autonomously create lenses at home. 
check the project page out for a lot more information. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.